Do they still have that rule? The in the U.S., mm -hmm. they do, but they don't internationally. So females get a class half point down. Uh, but she plays as a 1-5, uh, I guess, body point is pretty tough, I don't know. I think that's not enough women are involved in the sport, so it's encouraging for them to come. Good thing. Hey, guys. for president. And then the 45, if you're over 45, you also get a half point though. We're going to get that as good as we're old. <laughs> 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 but like, so we had for starting with a zero, right? Yeah, yeah. Like an old lady gets a zero or something? <laughs> <laughs> so if you're nice, you play five, you're over 45, you play we're, we're pretty much looking for nothing but old women. <laughs> 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 now, I did really learn this rule this summer. If you are, say, you're a point five player, female and over 45 you get like one point worth of touches but you're point five, so you can't go negative. Uh, <laughs> so you can't have an extra half point. <laughs> gotcha. Did you guys say how they classify you? Yes. Yeah. I already that earlier. So can you explain the rules? Because like yeah. I got a really good ex idea of like what gameplay looks like but not it's, how uh, it works. It's a lot like basketball. Uh, you have on the ball just like basketball. Uh, you got 12 seconds, you got 10, 10 seconds to get the ball in. Somebody knows it. Uh, once somebody touches the ball, you got 12 seconds to get the ball down the court, and 40 seconds all the way out. It's all kept on a shot clock, just like the basketball. Uh, the sport, I, I kind of have paid attention to that, but it was originally intended because a lot of us didn't have enough function to play basketball against some of these guys that would come in as a toe or something like that. You know? um, <laughs> So they they made quite a round piece. Sorry, there's nothing wrong with that. They just have more hand functions. Yeah, they would they would smear us. You know. <laughs> um, so anyway, what was that we talking about before that though? She has to explain more the rules. Oh yeah, uh, it's one point per goal. Um, and we got a bunch of. Uh, we also have turnovers. So if you don't get the ball across half quarter or in within 10 seconds or you know, that stuff, it's a turnover for second pass to the ball. Um, we got 12 seconds to get over the half court line. Yeah. From whenever the ball comes in. Um, and then you have a 40 second score clock. But if you violate any of those, it's a turnover. Uh, it's fast. You have four timeouts uh, per game. So if you're close to that, uh, 12 seconds without getting over half. If you're close to that score, you can 40. You can use a timeout. That will buy you more time. Um, well, two bench timeouts, too. There's two bench timeouts as well. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's there's a lot of smaller rules, but the gist of it is get the ball in, get over half. Score full contact. Can't hit somebody behind the axle of the wheelchair. So, like, in our rugby chair, if you're so if you hit somebody back here as they're moving, because the chair to spin pretty violently, 90 degrees really quick. All your momentum is going forward and all the center chair sideways. You flip over and it's, it can be really dangerous to on that field. So that's illegal. Uh, that's a big no-no. Depending on where you do that at, uh, you can get a technical or a play grade. So a technical is just like if you, you reach in for the ball, and you hit their arm, you hit no body body. You hit the chair's other arm, you won't put no body body contact. So you reach in, hit their arm, that's a, a technical. So that's one goal in the penalty box. You do a flagrant, which would be spinning the axle, it would be like it's across the goal line, something that's just your beginning here. Not necessary at all, <laughs> no good reason for it. Uh, that'll send three, you'll have to set up for three goals. So the other the team that has the penalty, that does penalty, they'll have three goals that the other team gets to score, and then they'll have to score with only three feet three or four. Basically like a power play hockey, they're one man down and they're in the penalty box. So it's just, I guess the simple layman's terms is get the ball in, try to control it yourself within the time frame, score across <coughs> the goal and get one point, and then transition straight to defense. 
So it's a pretty quick turnaround between offense and defense and, and back and forth. Is it a high scoring game? Like, what's the typical score, like, point range? Yeah, 40, 50 points per game. So, three, <coughs> you know, four, eight minute quarters with a stop of the play, yeah, I mean, 50 or, or so, depending on how. Is it one point per goal? Yeah. Because yeah. you can only score one point at a time. No, three quarters. Oh. How <laughs> <laughs> so many people are on your team? Oh, sure. This, it varies from year to year. On average, they work from like 10 to 15. This year, I think we're short. I think we're like yeah. we're around like eight, eight right now. Uh, this year. We had we had a few people move to different states for jobs and such. So, so I'm not really playing. And yeah. some think they're hurt and not playing. <laughs> <laughs> this goes right back to that spin rule. <laughs> we'll do that tonight at practice. <laughs> Um, I know in oh want to go Diane okay I know in past year your closest tournament has been like Southern Missouri kind of far away. You got them closer. You got them closer. Got them and what is your season and kind of if we want to come to a game when would that approximately be or where well, like what website do we check out to find your schedule? So this year we're still working on the logistics and, and the timing on the tournament. This year we've had. You know, with the tournaments being in Southern Missouri or Southern Illinois, you know, two or three years or so years ago, it was difficult for people to come. Last year we had one in uh, the St. Charles, St. Peter's area, um, and typically we have it um, the end of November, beginning of December, but this year we're having a little more difficulty getting a facility with two or three courts available that we can that's available and will let us have a you know a tournament there um, so we don't know for sure this year when we're going to have the tournament but we do look to have it either in you know end of november beginning of december if not we may have to wait till you know springtime next year because it just won't, won't work out with the short time frame that we're looking at but uh, Outside of our tournament, it's really pretty tough to go see. Yeah. Uh, we, I think the next coastal we would do is Chicago, which we're not doing this year. Uh, Kansas City as a team. There's one. In, was, there's one in Columbus, Ohio. There's one. Yeah, Kansas City. So there's, a, there's a team forming in Tennessee again, um, in the Memphis area. Don't let that discourage you, though. We do have super fans that drive well. But, <laughs> <laughs> but as far as that stopping at the sea or rugby game, yeah. that, that, that's. And in November, early December, usually is mm -hmm. a really, really good opportunity. Since our sport is kind of you know limited with athletes, it's it's tough. We can't we can't just have games like intramural games throughout the whole, through the city. Through we have to travel. They have to travel because there's approximately what fifty some teams in the U.S. Something like that. And, um, and this year, you know, our club is uh, it's. It's, we have a, uh, a basically a governing uh, in organization that we can file through for non-tax purposes and stuff. But this year we changed to DASA organization, so um, they have their website. If you're familiar with their website, they have a link, uh, and we're currently trying to change our um, change up our website also. It's, STL Quad Rugby, um, I think .org, I believe it was, but we're trying to change that up also. So I know we've thankfully with some group transition to DASA. It's uh, it's helped give a lot of individuals in the area a central place to go look for all adaptive sports in the, in the St. Louis area. But they um, they've got a little link for us or a little explanation of where we practice, when we practice, and then hopefully there will be updates on on our our game schedules, our tournament schedules, or and, and little, small little events or fundraisers that we're going to be having. We are going to be having um, the Able Body Tournament in October. Yeah, it's basically an opportunity for you. Anybody else that's not 
on the team to sit in our chairs and play for them for against other individuals that are either able-bodied or um, that aren't quite pleased so anybody that wants to come in and play. So that is the October 1st, the 1st of October. It's a Saturday. Saturday morning or Saturday all day, depending on how long, how many people and how many teams. Yeah. I'm sorry? Kay, Juan, and I were on the team. We were pretty awesome. We had pink shirts. <laughs> we lost, but we, we had fun. We had some goals, so that was fun. We were <laughs> So how did it become rugby? 
Well, I don't know about that. I just Mr. Politically Correct over here. I, think, I, I can't say for sure this is more of my guess, but I think it just combines a lot of the same sports. So there's the full contact aspect of it. Um, but it's just kind of a combination of different sports, and that's as close as we could get to something to compare it to. And it's really people, you say you play wheelchair rugby, they're like, oh, I've seen that with you. Like, I've seen able body rugby. It's like, well, it's... It's different. It's really quite a bit but different. But it's still, it's still a, a full contact sport. I mean, <laughs> basically, basically in rugby, they have the ball in their hand, and they're running towards the score, and if they get tackled, and they don't score or turn it over, they're all hitting each other back and forth no, non-stop until one of them goes across the goal line. So I like it. I like it. I think that's a... So you want to get the chair or you want to watch me do it? No, <laughs> I'm going to let other people okay. Oh, but I do have one more question. So okay. we have a lot of participants who may not find out about it um, like through the Rehab Institute or like right. they may have never met Mike and Mike goes out and promotes it. If we have someone who might want to try it, like, who do we connect them with, Lindsay, or can they talk to, like, one of you if they're not ready to come to a practice? Because yeah, Lindsay's busy. Or, Lindsay's or busy. Or Megan, Megan Morgan's now. Um, Got to DASA. Yeah. If okay. you, I mean, I, I think, thankfully, with, with the DASA website, the DASA individuals, they have somebody at their office, uh, you know, throughout the work day, um, and, and Lindsay. Yeah. Uh, we've been trying... Uh, our hardest the last few years to recruit or find individuals and um, and it just doesn't have to be individuals with spinal cord injuries um, it is you know any any individual with uh, three out of four of them yeah, yeah. If, if you know what if, if, if you think it might work it's always worth just trying to go far away and I know a couple of you work out here like we have participants come to visit or for an intake like would we ever be able to bring them over to the gym and talk to someone because sometimes people don't always call and follow up or wouldn't go online or send an email or call DASA. yeah no i mean we definitely encourage it uh honestly yeah it's if they're around up here mm -hmm. right It depends. I mean, I, I'm not 
familiar with like uh, CP stuff yeah. as far as like the muscle function goes. Uh, but if you're asking about yourself, I would I would say that you have enough impairment to play. Yeah. I mean, there's guys that walk in here your carriers, you know what I mean? So yeah, but you could definitely do it. It's yeah. attractive to that.
if the team hires you. So what the two pointers and the low point share can do is they it's so much harder to get past the low point share. So with the two pointer with their speed and their function and that it makes it kind of helps compensate for that, that function. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. that would be a good reason to switch over to have a two and a low point share. Yeah. Um, some teams around the US especially if they have six people and they're all lower functioning, so people just need to be in the balance and such a way this would fill that spot, you know. Yeah. Not really what they want to do even necessarily, not necessarily what they should be good at, but it's just because for the lack of having better options they have to have a low point share, low pointer and a high point share. Any other questions? Oh yeah, so all these tires are both there. So I guess the wheelchairs crash into each other and these nasty pickers are so they're just a lot of flats. So that happens. We need to call the equipment right now. And do some tires are we have to purchase a lot of them throughout the years. Yeah, they a lot of times they'll have a flat tire or whatever, and the axle in here, it just press the button and top it off, and then you grab a new wheel. Everybody has at least one spare, a lot of people have two. Uh, there's usually equipment managers for the team, but uh, for us, it's fathers and players. Uh, but yeah, you get to call it a quick timeout, and the reps kind of have to watch that because you could use that equipment timeout to kind of gain an advantage if you play right. They're about to score, you call it a quick timeout, and the ref blows the whistle. They have to re inbound the ball and give you another chance for a turnover. Uh, so the refs kind of have to watch it, but you call that a quick timeout. Uh, <laughs> they run out with the wheel, they have one minute uh, during the game to get everything done that they need to get done. So usually it's just a wheel, pop the wheel off, pop the wheel off. It takes 10 seconds usually. So, um, Most of the wheelchair wheels are, um, or they used to be the smaller size axles or the wheels that are real similar to just everyday wheelchair wheels um, with just guards on the front of them so they can protect, be protected from the hits and um, my wheels unfortunately get bent and the, the axles do and, and I've busted a lot of spokes over the years from getting hit pretty hard but uh, the newer um, wheelchairs have bigger axles and stronger hubs and so they they they're a little more durable but um, these wheels can get bent pretty easily um, yeah and this was this red plastic piece here was flat whenever I got it oh wow, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and it's kind of in pretty quickly like a car system too yeah you can play right but you can turn it in with the hand How much do you guys practice? So we practice for three hours, two nights a week. Oh. And then we'll typically, I don't know, six or seven tournaments in a year in a season. Seven or eight. At least, yeah. Maybe closer to 10, but yeah. Typically three nights, three nights a week, or I'm sorry, three hours for two nights a week. And then do you um, do conditioning on your own? Some do. Supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the idea. Yeah. A lot of us are pretty good at it, I think. And a lot of a lot of our players work out and at least lift weights on their own, or at least go on hit cycle rides or whatever. Uh, but yeah, it's, we kind of do some conditioning and practice once in a while, especially now because uh, Terry Morgan is in Rio, Chuck Melton is another team of ours, he's in Rio. Uh, a lot of people miss him, just started the season, kind of get back into it, you know. So last, we started last week, we had three actual players, four, <laughs> four, four actual players to show up. So. In those kind of practices, it's good to kind of try and get some conditioning done then, because we can. If we can have a good eight people playing, it's better to spend practice time than that, rather than conditioning. So, supposed to condition on your did, did you guys talk about big flip over? Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, you know my problems. Uh, did you guys talk about flipping over? 
a little bit. So as I was saying, like with the equipment timeouts, it's the same kind of deal with the equipment. So you can, and that happens, it depends, it can happen 10 times in the game, it could not happen at all. Uh, but whenever you, put, whenever you do get flipped over, which can happen just from hitting somebody head on, so it's really hard, to where you get top centered and come over forward. They can do the spin, the illegal spin that I was talking about. Um, or you can, like I said, you can just turn too fast and end up on the back. Uh, but whenever you do that, they get, I guess, is it still a minute for the equipment timeout? For your equipment managers to come out and they flip you back up. And you reach track your feet in if they fell out or whatever needs to be done. But yeah, that definitely, like I said, it can, we've gone games without it happening to anybody. And then so, so, so games, it's 10 times. So Tiffany asked earlier if we ever use stuff like that for our manual. The answer is yes. <laughs> uh, for instance, on USA, one of our calls was really bully. And if we were out of timeouts, one of the one of the guys in full order would flip himself over. Use <laughs> <laughs> that timeout that was the And typically, get subs in too, right? Yeah, you get to go in and get subs in, stuff like that. Um, because then you can say that you're injured. What's that? Because then you can say you're injured. Uh, yeah, something's wrong with the chair. <laughs> we call equipment. I mean, all of my tracks magically lose. <laughs> <laughs> But then to go along with that, if you have like the same issue, like two or three times in a row, the ref, at the ref's discretion, they can go, hey, get off the court. Yeah. So they give yourself $30. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Back. There's been places that haven't invited us back, so we want to make sure that courts as clean as we can get it. 
we have to run the table, so we have the shot clock kind of all the timing and things that they were talking about. We have to make sure people are there. They have a penalty box like they talked about. Someone has to be there. Um, at tournaments, we're required to serve the team lunch. So it takes a whole lot of people to put a tournament on and to run it pretty smoothly. So that's probably one of the biggest times we need volunteers at. So who are they contact? We are not doing this fine. But I'll send out the volunteer form to all of us in the movie director and That's all I can think of. Other questions? Anybody? So when's rugby starting in the Paralympics? Oh yeah, um, we we start Wednesday. Nine and thirty. Nine and thirty. Eight and thirty. What is it? Eight thirty our time. Eight thirty our time. I suppose. And then I. I would imagine that they'll have all the videos archived so you can watch it afterwards if you have to miss it. Yeah. And then they're televising on NBCSN, I think, is going to be adding rugby all four days from the 14th till yeah. the 18th. Is it going to be the same time? Is it going to be live on NBCSN? I don't know how. Yeah. I don't think, I think NBCSN is going to be late. Yeah. I don't think that that's the NBCSN on Wednesday is at <coughs> 1 o'clock in the afternoon.